So the topic for our fireside chat today is smart manufacturing and operational excellence. And we have two amazing panel speakers participating, participating in this chat today. Uh, one is Mr. Raju Goyal, uh, the Chief Technical Officer of Altratech Cement, and uh, Mr. Sunil Vedula, a CEO and founder of NanoPrecise Saipa. Uh, we often talk about digital transformation as a journey, and there are several uh, factors to this journey. There are several elements to this journey. So what do you think are the key priorities for a manufacturing organization when it decides to adopt digital transformation? So Mr. Rajugal, this question is for you. Digital trans uh, transformation is a journey. It is not like a one-stop shop or one-stop kind of a things you can do one day or two days or you can finish that very given timeline. So this is like a continuous journey which is evolving, which is keep on working and adopting according to a business model and business plans. So if I can say that what are the elements and the objectives can be covered by this uh, digital transformation could be, I will start with the, my customer point of view section. First of all, this is a, one of the area where you can get the customer's insights, customer pain points, and customer patterns, which is helps you to improve your services or improve your business or improve your uh, deliveries, what your customer is looking for that. Second, this is also one of the part I see that is a very good uh, journey for where the, all the teams and all the stakeholders are collaborating, working together and bringing the results together. Because in the normal life and normal things, people have like a silo working kind of things. But in the digital transformation, all the participants come to the same or all the stakeholders come to the same platform and contribute and do the, their own roles. With this, all these things, we can have this uh, opportunity to optimize and increase the efficiencies because these are the gaps in the silos, whatever leftover, which is not on the table and which is under the table, which you can bring into the table and get the efficiencies, optimization out. And this help us to adopt the new technologies, new way of doing the businesses. And similarly, I'll also say that when you have a, a understand the customer, understand your business, understand your people, then you can generate the new business models and the area where we have not gone to that are like some of the area which is uh, can be given the more value to your business so something like a what do you say that bring to the whole overall cost overall business overall uh, customer and the all the satisfaction kind of things and i believe that uh, digital transformation also bring the compliance because this is the one of the part i believe because having everything in the digitally and all the processes are defined, this brings the very much on the compliance issues, giving the, all I will say that the area which has not been explored or not been looked, if are also covered in that one, which is bringing to you the over total cost of ownership for the business and total new management and new areas and new ideas to explore and work on that. So Neil, what is your take on this? How do you, uh prioritize digital transformation yeah uh, th thanks for this question niranjan and uh, uh, it, it's it's an honor to talk to uh, somebody with, like uh, raju goyal with uh, so much experience and really i mean we we learn from people like these and customers like these and uh, thank you so much for this platform uh, i think in, in my view there are two fundamental objectives uh, in, in digital transformation. I mean, and when we talk about digital transformation is like, we have a like a machinery and all that in the plant. So I'm talking in that perspective. So I would see if you have a machine, basically there are two basic objectives. One is either that you want to understand uh, when something uh, wrong can happen to that machine, like when it can fail, or the other objective is how you can improve its uh, you know, productivity or its efficiency. Further in, you know, the, the first one where you try to determine the health uh, at any point of time, the health of the machine, uh, which is also called predictive maintenance, you have further objectives in that, like uh, you want to first determine if there is any anomaly and then you characterize the anomaly, like what is there a bearing fault, a shaft fault, a, a, you know, gear fault, a pump impeller fault, you know? And then finally, if you find a fault and then you try to determine what is the remaining time 
to failure for that machine, right? These are the three objectives of predictive maintenance. Uh, and for process optimization, you have stuff like, you know, if it is a steam trap, uh, whether it is leaking steam, because uh, losing steam is like, you know, losing energy. And uh, then, you know, uh, power consumption reduction, how you can do power consumption reduction. And then one of the most sort of, uh, you know, talked about topics these days is how do you uh, reduce the GHG emissions, right? The greenhouse gas emissions. So, and, and there are multiple elements to this, like, uh, you know, you have, uh, you know, what type of sensors do you need uh, for doing predictive maintenance? What type of sensors do you need for doing process optimization? Is the existing sensors like uh, the regular SCADA data from temperature, pressure, flow rate is good enough or you need additional sensors and why do you need that? And then on top of that connectivity uh, and wired or a wireless question, if it is wireless, you know, how do you, whether you're connecting over Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, LoRa, you know, cellular, and then the data types, like is it the single point data type or a multi-point, like a waveform type of data? And when do you need, what type of data you need, when to do, you know, or to uh, like uh, meet a certain objective of whether predictive maintenance or process optimization and the algorithms and cybersecurity. So it's all about how you, it's not like, uh, one is better than the other uh, or the other. It's like how you combine and it's like a jigsaw puzzle. You need a little bit of every element, how you fit to meet a specific objective in a specific application for a specific plant. Rajoji, according to you, what are the ideal metrics for optimization? Uh, specifically when you are setting, uh, setting the right KPIs. So that is my first question. And second question is, how do you align your matrix with your organizational goals and operations? Because you also have to run the operations while you are setting these KPIs. Yeah. So thanks, Anjan. As we all know, in any business, large or small, there's a number of KPIs can be driven. A number of KPIs are there, which are helping for business to run the business, monitoring them, benchmark them, and make the use of these KPIs to improve the business performance overall. But uh, what is happening in the current days based on my past experience, because this all KPIs are very departmental centric or very much functional sex uh, focused, which have the somewhere the misalignment between the one function to other function to because it may be particularly in that function, that KPI is working perfectly fine. But upstream and downstream that KPI may not be very much effective because this is the totally look into the one point. Right? So what I believe is in the digital technology by using the digital technologies and things, there's a very good opportunity for every uh, businesses, small or large, to bring all these KPIs in the one platform. So I will say that this KPI uh, alignment and matrix alignment is very important for that. And this uh, digital transformation can help us to look into the upstream and downstream impact of the one function KPIs. And if, you, if I can say that, uh, as you all know that, because the KPI is based on the number of data and all these things, right? And we all say that the data is oil, right? But I believe that data is oil by saying is not going to solve the whole problem because data quantity is not important. Data quality is more important. And the data quality is also need to be built into the, our KPI and our, all the whole metrics is what we are trying this one. Uh, if you say like uh, how this uh, can be impacted on the business point of view, so I will say that like the four coordinates I built into that uh, KPI's point of view. First, I build the customer. What the customer need, market need and segment and where you want to play in the whole market. And that you to define that. This will help you to develop your process and for operations and what capabilities you need to produce that market need and in terms of quality, volumes and uh, uh, portfolios and things, you have to work on around that. And after that, I will say that organizational, which is the related to the people, what kind of people will be required? What kind of resources are required for you? What kind of skill sets, knowledge, and database will be required for that? And then I come to the last, I come to the financial. I'm, I wish I will be, uh, you might be surprised in Sam, being in India, I put the financial KPIs as uh, the last one because, because once everything is aligned, then you look into the financial capabilities and look into that one. If you look into the financial KPIs in the beginning of that, 
you might have some areas which innovation cannot be driven by that only because sometimes some KPIs are not having the uh, direct tangible benefits, intangible benefits also there. So I think if you put in the whole code, like alignment of the four uh, coordinates of this customer, operations and the production capability or operational capability and processes, people part of that, and then the financial capabilities. If you mix this all the matrices together, and I'm sure that then this will be a wonderful business model and wonderful value creation for the existing or the new businesses both of them. That will be my uh, thought on that. How would uh, digital technologies help us integrate the KPIs? Because that is at the end of the day, the goal of the organization. And particularly in the case of Ultratech Cement, which is a fairly large organization. Yeah, I mean, uh, see, uh, in terms of uh, KPIs, like again, I will I'll go back to the, the the predictive maintenance and and process optimization related KPIs. There can be, uh, you know, um, uh, like a as as uh, Mr. Raju uh, rightly pointed out, different types of KPIs. Whether it's uh, you know financial KPIs, like how much uh, the manpower, uh, you know. Uh, you know, has been reduced, for example, doing manual routes for vibration readings uh, before and now, uh, you know, uh, after, uh, you know, having these kind of digital technologies, uh, whether, like whether that, that has reduced for the same quality of data as Mr. Raju really po rightly pointed out, right? Like, I mean, uh, there's no point in uh, like having a, uh, some wireless sensor whose data is not matching right and giving uh, bad results ultimately right and uh, that is that will give to more work than you know uh, that will that will not, you will not save anything by saving manpower there in fact you're causing more confusion in the organization so everything is interrelated all these kpis are interrelated whether it is manpower reduction data quality and then you know then you have like a uh, together, whether these, like if the enough time uh, passes, whether having these kind of technologies versus not having these kind of technologies using normal manual monitoring, uh, were you able to increase your life, equipment life, you know, and, 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 and one of the most important is overall equipment effectiveness after implementing this, has your OE of your equipment, has it increased? Right, and uh, uh, th those are predictive maintenance, uh, uh, you know, KPIs, and for you know process optimization KPIs. Again, it, they they are like, uh, for example, for a steam trap, like the moment it starts, uh, you know, uh, leaking steam out of normal, right? Every second, every minute, you're losing steam, and uh, so so there the KPIs are really straightforward, like steam loss. There, I mean, process optimization is all about the financial KPIs. Uh, but yes, as Mr. Raju said, uh, and it's so, so glad to hear this, that, you know, uh, I believe, uh, going by what Mr. Raju said, that if you take care of your, your you know, people KPI, your, you know, uh, uh, you know like uh, culture KPIs, and all of the others, the financial KPIs will take care of themselves. Disruption is actually the new normal that we live in uh, today's time with. And there are so many new technologies that are coming up. Every day we hear about a new technology. Uh, there was a time when AI and machine learning was something very futuristic, but today we are living with that. So are there any technologies that excite you as a chief technical officer? Well, I think very good questions are given the uh, context of India actually. So if I say the like an Indian context on that, the technology point of view, the Indian operation plants are the well designed and the how I you say that whatever the best machines and the technology can be bought by the money, they have already in place. So what I believe in that whole area is missing part of this, what we should do after that, having this all good technology and good equipments and all the things, right? Because if I compare with my past, my past experience of this number of countries I visited and there, they are much more higher on the instrumentation or in, the, in like all the machines and technology point of view there. But what happened after that, where we are, looking for the more uh, more information or more uh, value creation for that whole things. So take the one example of the one plant right now, in any given plant, any process plant, I'm talking about process plant, coming for the process technology, so looking for process to this one, thousands of data is generated every millisecond or every second of generated. 
And this data, what we should do with this data? For example, at the temperature, continuously monitor the temperature, compare continuously temperature, monitoring the pressures and flows and the vibrations and things. What I should do with that data? Because this data, we cannot convert this data to the uh, information and information to the action. So this link, I think, can be built by this whole technologies what we have uh, currently coming up in that. I would say that the artificial intelligence and the ML, I think you said right now we are living in that, but I think still there is a lot of usage can be done with the artificial intelligence and machine learning can be played a very important role to convert this data to the information, then to the action and action, the decision making on that. So if this path we can follow with this technology, so I will say that uh, excite me the artificial intelligence and machine learning. And also I look into the IOTs because this is the missing information which we required to make better decision on that will be one of the area. And second also the robotic, the one of the area where the repeated task and repeated things are happening. Robotic technologies can play the very important role where the human intervention or human monitoring is not possible there. So that's one of the area I also say that and repeated, repeated actions are happening there, like a packaging, loading, unloading, and just keep on watching the things and monitoring on this, looking the sites and the operations and whether it's moving or not. So this kind of things can be, a lot of things can be done by the robotic uh, technologies and that. So I will say that like, okay, all the data, how the convert, convert into the decision making will be the one of the part, which I say that uh, AI will be the, AI and ML could be the one of the part of that. And robotic is the one of the area which I think uh, can excite to the whole manufacturing industries. Uh, Sunil, uh, I have this uh, counter question for you. Uh, as a passionate engineer who loves technology, how soon can technology providers really provide solutions like this? Technology is, is developing at a pace, but the commercialization is taking a lot of time. And uh, for example, like uh, I would, I would tell you that, like I, I went to a conference uh, in in December uh, in in Florida, and uh, so we we provide uh, you know IIoT plus AI based solution. Our IIoT sensor is called Machine Doctor, and our AI based predictive maintenance software is called uh, you know uh, you know Rotation Life. But beyond that, what is like? So uh, I, I talked to this, uh, you know, company called motion amplification, right? Like, so now, you know, uh, the using the video, a very high resolution video, you can see how the machine is vibrating. And based on that, we can find out what are the ideal locations to install the sensor. And even better, you don't even need human being to install that. So the, I've met another company called Boston Dynamics, and we have uh, they have a dog called Spot, right? So this dog, as, as Mr. Raju said, robotic technology, I think it has really advanced. You can imagine that dog can go and put the, our sensor using motion amplification exactly at that location on that machine where the movement is the highest so that if there is any failure to be happening on that machine, it will happen exactly at those locations first. So you will be able to know from the sensor data very clearly, uh, no other place on that machine, the failure will happen before this particular, the, this, these are called in, in physics, these are called a stress um, uh, concentration points where the stress is highly uh, high, uh, most concentrated. So using, as you can see, the IoT plus AI based technology plus uh, motion amplification plus robotic technology, which can actually take off the sensor. I mean, that that dog, if you see the video in YouTube, it can actually take off. I mean, it can open the door knob or it can, you know, put the sensor, it can take off the sensor, it can climb the ladders. As Mr. Raju said, it can go to places where it is, you know, uh, not safe for the human beings to go, right? This is already there. And, but I think uh, the commercialization is taking a little bit of time, but very soon, I would, when I say very soon, I think in not more than five to 10 years, you would see this kind of technology pretty much in every plant in the world. Mm -hmm.